Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again and in this video I'm going to talk about that how do you set dynamic data types for your columns in Power Query. Let's start. Alright, I'm in an Excel file that contains some very simple data. Take a look at that. So we have a date column, we have a name column, we have a value column and we have a text column. What I'd like to do is dynamically define the data type for all these four columns. To be able to dynamically do that, what I have done is on the right hand side created a small table which is where I have the names of the columns. These names of the columns have been copy pasted from the headers right here and I copy these headers and I paste them right out here. And what I have done for every single column is define the data type manually. Now the user will have the control if the user says that this particular column is going to be the data type of a date, it will actually become a date. If the user says this is going to be a number, this will actually become a number. So whatever the user is going to define in the Excel spreadsheet, that is going to be dynamically applied as a data type inside of Power Query. Let's just see how can we do that. To be able to do that, we need both of these data sets into Power Query and let's just start from there. Alright, I'm in Power Query and you can see that I have loaded both these data sets into Power Query. We have a data set called data and the other one is called data type. Now what I'm going to do now is apply the data type to all of these four columns manually. Take a look at the M code gets, that gets generated and work with that M code further. So why don't we actually select four columns to begin with uh, and I'm just going to go to the transform tab and then click on detect data type. And once I actually do that, you can see that there is an M code that gets generated and let's just try to understand this M code because we'll be making the tweak in this particular M code to be able to get the result that we actually want. So take a look at this M code. Uh, the first part of the M code is the name of the table, the table in which we were trying to apply the different data types to different columns. And if you just go further and take a look at further, you will have uh, like a outside curly bracket and an inside curly bracket. Every single sub curly bracket has two parts. Take a look the name of the column, which column are you trying to change as a data type and what is the data type that you're trying to apply. Second is the name uh, and the type. The third is the value column and the type and the fourth one is the text column and the different and the type on that. Every single column uh, where we are trying to change the data type is in a list. So whenever you see a curly bracket, it actually means a list. And all of these columns are then packed again into a larger curly bracket, which is the larger list. So to be able to solve this problem, what I need is a larger list. And in that list, I will need to have some smaller lists like individual lists. And every single smaller list is going to have two parts. Part number one is going to be the name of the column. And part number two, what data type are we trying to apply onto that column? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually work with this particular table which is where I have the name of the column and I also have the type of the column and let's just try to work with this table to be able to create that structure that we saw in that M code that got generated on its own. Now we move on to work with the second table which is the data type. Although you can see that we have two simple straightforward columns here, we have the name of the column and the type of the column but there is a slight bit of problem for Power Query. Now you can see that we would like to convert the date column into the data type of a date but for Power Query the four letters D, A, T, E are just a piece of text Text, it's not really a data type that we can actually pick it up and apply it to a particular column. So what we need to do is we need to read what the user has written in this particular column in our Excel and then be able to convert this into an actual data type that can be carried forward into this query. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a column and depending upon what the user has written in this particular column, I'm actually going to convert it into a relevant data type. Take a look. I just start writing a very simple if function and I'm just going to say uh, take a look at the type column which is this particular column and see what the user has provided. So I'm just going to say if the user has written the data type of a date then I just want any random date then hash date and just make any random date 2020 one and one. If that is not a date uh, then in that case I'd like to maybe check for another condition if the user has written maybe the data type of a number in that case uh, just write any number which could be one uh, otherwise just write any piece of text maybe a so here in this very simple if condition all that I'm trying to say is that see what the user has written and depending upon what the user has written why don't you actually create a date any particular number or any particular piece of text now once I commit to this formula and say okay what I get is the actual values depending upon what the user has written. So if the user wrote a date, we just create any random date. If the user wrote a number, we just create any random number. Now this is not as of yet a data type. We need to convert this into a data type. To be able to do that, I'm actually going to use a function called value.type 
and I'm just going to surround this entire if function in value dot type. So value dot type is going to take a look at what value is there in the column and convert it into its relevant data type. If I commit to this, you can see that it actually becomes the data type. If I just maybe click on the side of it, it shows me that there was a date in this particular field and this is now a date data type. Take a look at this one. This is actually a number data type. We're good so far. Now what I'm going to do is I actually don't need this column anymore. I can just get rid of that. And if you remember, the query that we created had a change type step and the change type step actually was creating a list inside of a list. So we need a larger list and then we need smaller lists which are going to have two parts, the name of the column and the type of the column. We have the name of the column and we have the type of the column but this is nowhere a list. So let's just convert a larger list and then have smaller lists in type of that. So I'm actually going to use the fx uh, to create a new step and transpose this entire table. So there is a function called table.transpose and I just transpose the entire table, close that bracket and press enter. Now we have the name of the column and the type, name of the column and the type, name of the column and the type. But this is again not really a list of a list. So I need to further uh, take this entire data set and convert it into a list and in that list you will have smaller lists which are going to have two parts, the name and the data type. How do I do that? I create one more step and I just convert this into a zipped list. So I'm just going to use something like table dot two columns and just refer to the previous step, press enter, and we, you can see that we I get a list from this. If I just take a look at the first list inside of the larger list, you will see that we have the name of the column and the type. Now this is good enough. This is something that Power Query is going to accept as the second part of the change type step. So if I now go back to the data here, and if I just go ahead and take a look at my change type step, you can see that we have a we have a list here that was the outside curly bracket and inside of that we have the name of the column, the type, the name of the column and the type, so on and so forth. I can just get rid of the entire step right here and I can say that I have created uh, a custom data type which I would like to apply it here. The format and the structure is exactly the same as you would expect it to be. So we have smaller lists and then we have a larger list. So I'm just going to use that uh, query that I have created, which is nothing but a list. Close that, commit to that. And you can see this actually converts it into a date. This actually converts it into a number. This actually converts it into a text. Let's just try to load this data in Excel and let's just see how it works. All right, the data has been loaded into my Excel and let's just try to test it out. This is the data that we actually started with and this is the dynamic uh, entry point of what types I'd like to apply to my columns. And you can see that to the value column currently the type that I've applied is a number. Let's just try to change that and for some reason let's just try to convert the numbers into a text. And as soon as the numbers actually become a text they should actually be left aligned. So if I just go here and dynamically change the type of my column which is the value column I'm just going to come here and hit a refresh to my query and what you will find is that this particular column which should have been a number now converts into a text. Let's just do one more trial. There is, there is another type of data called uh, something like a date time and I can just write date time here and I can just come here and hit a refresh and what you will find that this particular column is now converted into a date time format. Alright, that was the way in which you can have dynamic data types to your columns in Power Query. I just picked up a few data types but in case you'd like to take it further, now you know a way to do that. Okay, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you're wanting to learn the fundamentals first, either for DAX or for Power Query and then move on to solving more challenging, more sophisticated problems of your own data, I will highly recommend that you take a look at these courses. You will find them amazingly helpful. And if you have any questions around this, please feel free to put down a comment and I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one.